Hey there, welcome back to Curtis Stage Tutorials. This tutorial is on Dreamweaver. We're getting our Photoshop file from part one of Photoshop to Dreamweaver in Adobe CC. We're now in part two. We're gonna bring our images in and really do our layout here in Dreamweaver. So I've got my index file open. It's connected to a CSS document. These are connected right here if you're new to this. This is an external style sheet connected. Uh, this is how we do it in my class. So I've got an external style sheet here. There's my index file. The CSS sheet is connected right there. I've got my files panels over here with all the things that I did in Photoshop and my web layout assets. I also have my images folder. That's the slice for the header. That's right there. So I'm going to close this files panel. Make sure you're connected to it. And I'm going to go to my body and I'm going to create some of the structure here. So the first structure I want to create is a container. The container is something that I made up. I made this name up. Uh, you can name it any anything you want here. So if, if it's something that I made up, I have to say div space class equals quotes, give it the name that you want to call it. Container is kind of a standardized name, but the Worldwide Consortium just has not kind of solidified that this is going to be something we all agree upon and this is how we're always going to do it. So for now, we still have to call it a container and call it and make it a div. So here's the end tag. Here's the uh, beginning tag. Here's the closing tag. Opening, close, and then inside there we want to make the header. And then I'm going to put the header in there. The header is an agreed upon tag, so I can just use it like this. Now, if I inserted the image right here, so let's say I went up to insert image and found my header BG and put it right there. Well, that's great. That's inside uh, the div box of header. But the problem with this is if I put this in here and give it a width and make it go all the way across, it's the only thing that I can have in that div box because it's in the foreground of the div. I want this to actually be in the background of the div. So I'm going to put that in the CSS. Let's go over there and make that next. So in CSS, I'm going to create the container first. So I'm going to say container. There it is. Give myself some curly brackets. I'll give it a width of 960 px semicolon maybe I'll give it a background color so I kinda know what's going on there so background and color and I could use my I could use a color picker if I want to or or whatever right I could start typing in some names um, if I know what I want and then semicolon so that ends that one uh, I'm gonna give it a height for right now I may change this later but I'm gonna say 900 px and there I go. Now I've got a, an initial box on my screen. If I want this to be in the center of the web browser right now, it's a line left and up at the top left corner. I can go up here to margin and add a margin dash left. And really, this would be a way that I could just kind of auto this. And you'll see, you could do that. And then I would put that also on the right hand side. So I've got that too. And go here and auto, and then it's going to be in the center. So see how it centers it? Now, I could do a shortcut of this, which is CSS shorthand, where I could do forget all that, and I could kind of do it in one fell swoop, where I say margin, and then colon, and if I put a zero here, and that's the top and the bottom, then I do a space, and now I'm just dealing with the left and right, and auto, and then that's covering both my left and right at the same time, and my top and bottom, it's giving me a, a zero margin, zero px. I don't need to put px with zero. I can just, it's the only number that I can leave it without a px like this. I don't have to have to have it. If you want to put it in there, you can. Uh, some people feel more comfortable with that, but either way. So now I've got this centered container. Let's make the header. So header does not need a period in front of it because it's an agreed upon element name. And so all I have to do is give it the header with the curly brackets and let's give this a height. Now the height of the of the slice that I made was 93 pixels. So it's good to write those things down if you have a chance. I'm going to do background image. So I'm going to go back here. Instead of background color, I'm going to say background dash image. And you'd think it'd be this very first one right here, but actually you want to scroll down and pick URL, and then you want to browse for that. And there it is, background image. And after this, I want to put a semicolon. There we go. It's repeating across. Now, it's repeating on the X 
right, the horizontal. It also is repeating on the Y, and to prove that, if I put in a 1 right here and click, you can see it's repeating both horizontally and vertically. But if I put the exact height of the slice, which was 93, so I'll take that 1 back off, then it's going to shrink back down and not repeat going the vertical. So I just want it repeating horizontal. So perfect. So we've got our repeating uh, header here. And what's great about this is that since it's in the background, since this image, this JPEG, is in the background of this div box, now I can put things over the top of this. So now we're going to move on. Let's go back to our source code. And we want to put inside our header, we want to put our logo. So I'm going to give myself some space here in the header. And I'm going to make a logo div box. So I'm just going to indent this. I'm going to put in a bracket, div, space, class, uh, equals, and then logo. And this is my opening. And then there's my closing of this. So this, this is where I can then put the logo inserted right in here. So when I do the div class equals logo, nothing else is going to go inside the logo box. Uh, div box. So I can go up to insert image and I can go into my folder here, my web la uh, assets, and I can go and find the logo PNG. Now that's 266 by 47. Sometimes it's a good idea to write that down so that when you're making the div box back in CSS, you can give it the exact size. So right here on a Mac, it's telling me what the size is. It doesn't always do that, but it's good when it does. Uh, so good idea to check what your sizes are. So I'm going to click OK to that, and there's the logo. It's not where I want it at all, so let's go back to the CSS. And let's make a logo now for the CSS. So if I put the dot in there, the period, for div class, then I can click logo and put my curly brackets. And now I can move this around. First of all, let's give it the height and width. I just wrote those down, so uh, my height is 47px, semicolon, and my width is 266 px semicolon that ends it and so it didn't really change anything here but if I click on it you can see that little blue box that's surrounding that telling me that that's my height and my width now this is a PNG file right I inserted a PNG you can see that right here logo.png why is that important because it's got transparency on it if this was a JPEG I'd see a white white box would happen behind the uh, words here and I'd have white so the JPEG would fill in the transparency. So I do want that as a PNG. So back to my CSS, I can now move this around. Well, I definitely want it to come down off the top. So that's what we're going to do next here. OK, so now we're going to move this logo down and over. So if I want to move it over to the right, I would say margin right margin dash left and that's on the left hand side of the object and I could say I don't know at 50 pixels and you'll see it will move over there when I click up here there it goes and moves over now I'm gonna move it down from the top I don't want it up in this you know I don't want it up kind of in the top up there I'm gonna move it down so I'm gonna say margin dash top oops margin dash top and let's say 20 pixels. Now something weird is going to happen when I do this. Uh, as soon as I click up here, you're going to see it pulled the whole, it didn't move it down within the, low, within the header, it actually pulled the whole thing down. And so that's a weird quirk within uh, Dreamweaver, within uh, CSS coding. Uh, I have to actually go up in the header and I have to put some padding inside the header. It can be, uh, if I go, it's, it's kind of weird because it's the parent that holds this object has to have padding in it. So when I margin on the top, uh, it will not pull it down. So padding is on the inside of the div box. Margin is on the outside of the div box. So if I put padding, and I put padding, to, you know, dash top, or you know, it's padding all the way around it if I want. So I can just put padding like this and put one px, and you'll see when I click up here, it's going to go back up. All right. So that's perfect. So now this has come down and it's not sitting up in that little area up there. Okay, so next we want to add the four buttons going across next to the logo, so right here. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom uh, of the CSS. Actually, I'm going to switch to source code and do this inside the header in the HTML first. I'm going to go to all code view just so I can see this a little bit better. So below the logo, I'm going to now create our objects 
uh, they're going to come right after the logo. So logo is first in line, and then I'm going to make the next one. So div space class equals this one's I'll call it home, and then give it the open tag, close tag. What I can do here, which makes this just really easy, is once I've got that, cop highlight it, copy it, Command C or Control C on a PC, and then. Command V is in Victor, and or Control V if you're on a PC, and do that four times. And now I've just changed the name of each one of these classes. So the second one I'll call Portfolio, and then the third one I will call About. And these are going to correspond to the buttons that we created in Photoshop, and the last one will be Contact. So again, these are corresponding to what we have in in Photoshop. And so then I'll go and insert that I want these to be in the foreground of these div boxes because they're going to be clickable buttons. They're going to have rollover states on them, hover states. So I'm going to go up to insert image and I'm going to pick in this, you know, I've named them all in here. So I've got my home. There it is. And then I'm going to go to the portfolio, go to insert image, same thing. I'm going to go to the portfolio. I don't want the hover one that will come later. I want to go to the about insert image right up there. I don't know where I was going. Go to about and there's the hover and there's the that and then contact. So once I've got all those in there, I'll get the contact one and there it is. Then that's good. Now I want to make the CSS. So I'm going to go over to the styles and to put those in. It's pretty easy, right? So once I put a period in there, it's going to see all these. And I'll just I'll just make them really quick first, get them all kind of in there. So then the dot, and then this one's going to be the portfolio. Put the curly brackets, go down below that, hit return, put the dot. Then I'm going to go to about. So I'm just going right down the line, and I'll put all the properties and values in those declaration brackets in a second. I just want to get all of them in here first, so they're all in here. And now I can go back up to home, and I can tell it, give it its width. And its height. One way you can check the width and the height is to, so I can do, right? And I don't have it in there, so that's why it's white like that. So once I put it in there, um, so I can put that in all of them. So I can go like this. They're all going to have a height and width, so I can kind of shortcut this. And they're wrong right now, but they're going to be right in a second because I'll put their their info. So the width on the home, if I go back to my source code, I can see the sizes of these things. So my home width is 88, and there's the 76. So 88 and 76, that's all I need back on the style sheet. So 88 wide, so got to have the PX, and then by 76, PX, semicolon, and I'll go to the width, and the width is 120. You can also write them down, which is helpful too, so you don't have to keep going back and forth. And then the height should be 76 on all of these. So 76. And then I'll go to the about, and the about is 88. So that one is the same as the home button. And then the height is 76. And then the last one is contact. Uh, let's see if I got that. Contact one is 116 by 76. So that's 116. PX semicolon by 76 PX semicolon. So I've got all those, right? So this is good. Oh, don't forget, if you have missing a semicolon anywhere, it's going to, you know, got to double check and make sure that you've got those semicolons on the end of all of those. All right, so nice. If I go to split view, you're going to see them, or live view, you're going to see them stacked up like this. Well, that's not good. I want them over here, right? This home button is coming after this one, but it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's cascading down from the top and the left. Well, I want to break some rules. I need these to go over here. So to do that, I need to then float these. So let's go back to the CSS and let's float these. So I'm going to go to the CSS uh, and I'm going to just stay in code view and I'm going to add a float left on every one of these in the line. I'm going to start with the logo. The logo is the first in line. If I look back here in live view, I have to make sure that the logo, right, that is also floating left. So just it's going to be horizontal just like these. Dreamweaver doesn't know the difference between this box and those four boxes. So let's go back to code view. 
And I'm going to put the float left. I'm just going to do it once and then copy and paste it on all of them. So I'm going to say float and left, and this will get them horizontal, right? So once I've got that, I'll control or command C, and then I'll go to my home, control or command V, and I'll do that to all of these. You got to make sure your spelling's right on all of these. You got to make sure that you have your semicolons in the right place, and then you're good. So now if I go back to live view, then they're going to go horizontally. Now I don't like them right there, clearly. That's not where they're going to go. So now I need to move them over and I need to move them down into place. So let's do that next. Okay, so if I want to put the margins in there, I'm going to start off with the logo. Uh, I do not want the logo. Well, actually, let's start off with the home button. I'm going to go here right after the float, hit return, say margin dash left. And I want that home button to sit about, I don't know, 50 pixels away from the logo. So it's going to, if I click over here, it's going to move it over. Then each one of these, well, I could take that and copy it. So Command, Control, C, it depends on if you're a PC or Mac. Uh, hit that, put that in with Control, V is paste, and put that in in between those. And you'll see when I click, well, now that put them all in, but it, too much separation. So I actually want to go about 10 pixels on all these. So I'll go 10, 10, 10 on those three. I'll keep the home one at 50. Okay, so now I want to push these down, right? Just like I did with the logo, I want to do a margin dash top. So I'll take the margin dash top from the logo. Uh, 20 might be too much. Uh, maybe it's like, I don't know, 10 pixels, but I'll just put it in there and and just change that out. And now look, the home one is coming down. None of the other ones came down. You'll notice that when I margin one over, they all push over. So when you go left and right, the margins will push the floated items left or right. But when you're talking about top and bottom or up and down, they will not push each other. So when I put this margin dash top, so now I can just take this one because I like the 10 pixels. Right, so that's going to be good. Okay, so that's looking good. And so I also want to change, okay, this little space that's right there, it looks like I have the wrong width on my about. That looks like it needs to be bigger than that. Let me go look at the source code. And if I look at the about, it's a great way to troubleshoot this. Yep, sure enough, the width there is 116. And so I don't have that there. I had it at 88. That's not going to work. So I got to go back here and that one should be 116 as well. And now when I click that, now I've got the right space. So that looks good. So our next step now is to make the hover states on these. So let's do that. So hover states are easy. I'm going to go back to my source code. I'm going to click in. I'm not going to click here in the design view. I'm actually going to click on the code view right here, highlight the text. You don't need to drag and highlight it. If you just click on the text itself so that it's highlighted, it'll be highlighted over here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to open up a panel. We're going to go to Window, and we're going to go to Behaviors. It's right here. Once I click Open Behaviors, you're going to see this dialog box that comes up. I'm going to, there's a little plus button in here. I'm clicked on my Home button, so that's the first one I'm going to do. And I'm going to go here to the plus button. I'm going to go to Swap Image. And when I click Swap Image, I'm going to browse for the hover state. So I want that one. Remember, we did that in Photoshop. And there it is. And click OK. Now I won't be able to see anything until I hover over it. All right? Now let's go to the next one. And it, by the way, it put a whole bunch of JavaScript code in there. Just disregard that. Don't touch it. Just leave it. Okay, so I'm going to go here to Portfolio. I'm clicked here. I'm going to go to the plus button. Then I'm going to go up down to Swap Image. Don't touch anything here. This is already, it, that's the one I'm clicked on. So it's just telling me which one I'm clicked on. I'm going to go to Browse. I'm going to go to the Portfolio Hover. Click Open. Click OK. Done. When I hover over it, see how that works. And I'm going to go to the next one. That's my about. So I'm going to click my about, go to the plus button, go to swap image, go to browse, and then go to the about hover, click open, click OK, done. And then the last one is contact. I'm going to click it down here, go to my plus button, swap image, and browse. And this is then the contact hover. So there it is. If you click the wrong one, you'll know it right away because the wrong word will show up when you hover over it. But now I've got all that right. So perfect. 
So I can close the behaviors panel. I won't need that again. And now we're going to start moving down our document. Okay, so we should put in our large box next. That's going to go right here underneath the header. So I'm going to do that in the code below the header. I'm going to give myself some space here. And I want to put it there. So this is a box name that I'm making up again. So div space class equals uh, quotation marks inside here. I'll say large box. That's what I named it, I think, back in Photoshop coming out of there. And then I'm going to close that, and that's the closing for the large box. I'm going to put the image in here, uh, but I don't want to put it in uh, right here because, again, I'm going to put stuff in front of this. This is just the background. This large box is the background image. Um, I made that big gray background image, and I don't want it in the foreground in HTML because then I can't put anything on top of it. So I'm going to do that in the CSS. So let's go to the CSS. Uh, give ourselves some space here below the stuff we just made. And now I'm going to add the style of large box there. So once I do this, I've got my curly brackets and give myself some more space right here. So once I've got these curly brackets right here, now I can put the background image here. Again, I want the background image in, image in this box because this is now I can put stuff on top of it. So background. This is not an insert. This is background dash image colon. Instead of image, I go down to URL, browse. It's going to go into our assets and look for large box. There's the size right there. So if you haven't written down your size, you can on a Mac, you can see your dimensions right here, 950 by 267. I'm not sure on a PC if you see them right there. I think you do. But that's what I want to make sure that I have for uh, my height and width here. So I'm going to click open because notice how they're not right here. It's only in, HT, in the source code in the HTML that you see the height and width. So the semicolon, and that's going to, um, it's not going to show up yet. I mean, I click here, you expect it to show up, but I haven't defined the height and width for this box. So I'm going to give it a height and width. It doesn't matter which one I start with. I'll start with the height. And the height of this was 267. So 267px, the width was 950px, and now when I click, it's going to show up. Perfect. Now what I want is I want this thing to be right in the center. Right? I want it to be right in the center, So, and I want it to come down away from the header a little bit. Now my design in Photoshop may have had it 50 pixels in Photoshop, but maybe I want it 25 here. This is what's kind of nice is I'm recreating this like a puzzle almost. I'm putting it back together, but I can nudge things and do things a little bit differently than my original design in Photoshop. So first thing maybe I'll start is move it down. So I'll say margin dash top and I'll say, I don't know, 25 pixels. And then I'm going to do, so that's going to, when I click here, so push it down. Now I want it to be centered within this box. So I'm going to say margin dash left and auto semicolon and then I could do the margin dash right so I could do this and I could do the shorthand for this too anyways there we go and now I've got it centered you can kind of see it right here on this side and this side it's centered inside the blue box so perfect there now one last thing to do on here since I floated these left and they're breaking the rules of the CSS flow of the document the very next object that comes after them, which is this div called large box, it needs to be cleared of this float so that it does not try to fall in line with the last one. So we've got you know one, two, three, four, five items floating. This item thinks it wants to float too. It wants to follow its brothers and sisters. But we want to actually break the cycle here. So what I want to do is I want to uh, say disregard the float that's happening on this last object with you. So that's called a clear. So what I want to do is I'll go down here and I'll just put clear. And I could put in there left because I only floated left. But I, just to be safe, put clear both. And then you're not going to really see anything happen. But you won't have any kind of abnormalities in the rest of your code when you start to put objects inside this. As things start acting wonky when you don't do these clears. So you'll see me do this a lot. In fact, we'll have a clear on the footer as well. 
All right, so then the next step is putting stuff inside this box. So the two boxes, uh, let's make those in, the two boxes that are gonna go inside here, let's make those in the HTML first. So they're inside large box, right? So here's the open it and here's the close of large box. They need to be inside it, right? They're nested in there. So the first one is gonna be called, uh, let's call it small box one and small box two to keep this uh, you know, very easy to figure out. So div space class equals small box. You can't have any space in there. It's got to be, oops, and I forgot the quotes around that. Can't have any space in there. It's got to be all one word. And then I'll do that and then I'll copy that and I'll give it a one and a two in a second and paste that. So copy and paste. So this will be a one. This will be a two. Perfect. Now, I don't want to put this. This is uh, I don't want to put any um, image in small box one. That's going to be text. Uh, small box two is going to have the image in it, and I do want that in the foreground. So I'm going to insert that in now. So I'm going to go to insert image, and that one is let's see, large pick. That's what that was called. And the num and on that that is. Uh, the width on that's 46 by 247, right? So I want to write that down, remember that. It's not where I want it to be at all, right? It's over on the left-hand side, just kind of, you know, pushing things around. Let's go into the CSS and kind of make that look better. So right underneath here, and I'm just going to go to code views, get this out of my way. So over here, I want to go to make small box. So, so there's small box one, give it its curly brackets. Then I'll make small box two. And if I put in the S, it'll automatically go there for me. And then put in the curly brackets. And now I can put in their right properties and values. So the small box, I'm just going to kind of guess on here. So I'll give it a height and width. So again, it doesn't matter which one comes first. Spell them right. So maybe this one is 250 pixels. Because my whole width of my whole box is 950, right? So my width on each of these two boxes can't be more than 950, and that's with margin in between them and stuff. So I want to make sure that whatever sizes I make here, my two sizes that are nested inside the bigger box, so the two small boxes are inside large box, right? And that's 950 right here. This, this just, only math I got to do is that can't be bigger than this box. So, so the width of this plus the width of this cannot be bigger than 950. And that's also including the margin space that I create and any padding that I create. All right, so that's my width, my height. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and the height would be, what is that, 250 as well, just for right now, because I know uh, my height of this box is, well, it's, I mean, you know, large box is 267. So 250 is safe in here, especially if I put some padding uh, and some margin in that. So that's pretty good. And the thing about this is, is I, I know the small box is going to come off the right hand side a little bit, or it's going to, you know, kind of margin off the right. So, or margin, you know, so I want to say margin dash left, it's going to margin off its side. And then what I want to do is give that a probably, I don't know, 50 pixels. And then that'll come off the side. And for right now, just so we can see it, I can give it a background color. So I can say background color and give it, you know, in the color picker, just so I can kind of do that and that. And if I go over here to split view, I'm going to see it. So there it is. And they're stacked on top of each other because why? They don't have the floats yet. So we're going to do that here in a second. So I'm going to go right after this background color. I'm going to say float. And this is going to be left and semicolon. And I know I'm going to put uh, some of this stuff in small box too. So I'm just going to highlight all this, command C and put this in here. I don't need the background color. So I, I copied and pasted, get rid of the background color, keep the float. Now my width and height on this one are different. So my width on this is going to be what, 486, I believe. So I've got to kind of do that. So 486, and then my height on this. I want the height on this to be exact. So watch when I go over here to split view. So now they're lining up, but you can see on here that this is not quite fitting inside this space. So I want this to be exact in here. So I want to push it down. So that height is going to be for small box two is going to be 247. It's just a couple pixels off. 
Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to add uh, a margin dash top on both of these to push them down because I don't want them right at the top of these boxes. So on small box one, I'm going to say margin dash top colon, say about eight pixels probably. So let's click here and see if that works. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I'll take that and I'll copy that, command C, and I'll put that in small box two. There we go. So there's that. Now what I want to do is, well, I want to get rid of this red and add some add some text in there. So I don't need that red box there, but I'm going to leave it there for now because I want to show you something. So I'm going to go into code view. I'm going to go into small box one and I'll add a P tag and that'll give me some text there. So hi there. And there we go. Now you'll notice how the text is right next to the edge of this wall right here. And I don't want it to be, let's say I, I want that away from that wall and I did want this color here. So I want to add what's called padding in there. Padding is on the inside of the div box and margin is on the outside. So if I go to the CSS and I go to small box one and I add padding dash left, so it's on the left hand side, and let's say 10 px. Now you'll see when I click it pushes it away. Now that's all great, but it also, if you look closely, let me undo that, it adds, right, here we go. Oops, now I want to redo that. So it adds um, some width to this box. So just be aware, let me just kind of do that again here. So padding dash left colon and I'm going to really make it big so 20 pixels and this width of this box is 250 but I just added 20 pixels so now it just actually made the box 270 see it expand so if I really need the box to be 250 because it needs to fit perfectly well then I'll need to subtract some off of this so then I would need to make this 230 and now it subtracts all right so pretty good uh, now I can take the red off of this. I don't need this on here. So let me go back to code view and go into here and get that red off there. Bam. And now I've got that. So perfect. So now we're going to work our way down to this area right here. Okay, so to do that, I want to go to the source code. So in the source code, we're going to put that next, the, the, the stuff that goes right here, we're going to have to create two columns. The, uh, let me go just to kind of live view. So we want two columns, right? In our Photoshop document, we had some text here, we had some text here, we had a uh, heading here, a heading here, we had some text here, and then we had two pictures right there. So I want to make two columns. To do that, I want to wrap those two columns in one single box. That way I can control them a lot better. So let's make that first. So I'm going to go back to code view, scroll down to... Uh, just below uh, small box, uh, be below the uh, large box, this is going to, right, I, I just made small box one and two, so I want to go below large box, give myself some room, and I want to make this a div space class equals, and I'm going to call this a wrapper, like W-R-A-P-P-E-R, -P -P -E uh, and then inside that, so... There's the closing tag. I'm going to move this closing tag down. So Command X, I'm going to move it down there. So there's where wrapper is. And inside wrapper, then I'm going to make a left and right column. So let's make that now. So div space class equals left. Oops, left. And there's my left column. And then I'll just copy this and make the right column. So Command C or Control C, V, uh, and then I'm going to make this right. Okay, so I've got those two items, and I can give myself some space between those. Uh, I'm going to just kind of move the closing div for left down and move the closing div for right down because items are going to now be nested inside those. So if I look back in here on the left-hand side, if I go over here, I want to have a, the text, heading text that goes right there and heading text that goes right there. So in the left side, I'm going to make a heading text. So I'll call that heading one. So, you know, I get tired of writing div class equals a lot. So command C on any one of these, command V, and I'm going to call that heading one. 
and then I'm going to copy this one and well this let's make the close tag first so oops let me make the close tag first so I'm going to click here and and then the slash and then I'm going to hide so Okay, so I'm going to make the close tag here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to highlight this. Command C. And I'm going to go down here. Command V. And I'm going to call this heading 2. All right, so I just don't want to be typing so much. So it's just easier if I use the same things all the time. Inside heading 1, right, that's going to have uh, one of my images. So I'm going to go up to Insert Image. And that one was called Current News. There we go. If I go to Split View, there it is. And then inside this side, right over here, heading two, that was the other one. That was the featured one. So I'm going to go here and go to featured work. There we go. So now that's in there. So if I look at these in split view, that's those. Of course, I haven't done any CSS yet. So they're doing what they're supposed to do. They're not floating left yet. And we'll get there. Um, inside this heading, below the heading, uh, just add some text. So I'm going to do another div class equals again. Um, you know, I don't really want to type all this if I can, so I'll just use one to copy it, and I'll call this text one. That makes it easy because I might have more text on the site. So both these two things, heading one and text one, are nested inside left. Heading two is ne nested inside right, and both left and right are headed, nested inside wrapper. Okay, so I need the closing of text one. Now, I want to put some just dummy text in here. There's a great place to get dummy text, and that is on a site called Lipsim. Oh, oh, right up here, I forgot to put a closing P tag, by the way. Sorry about that. So I got to do a slash, closing P tag. And I could put some text in there of just like I was looking up here because I could use this P tag right there. Um, and I could take that and put it right down here. But if I wanted to get more paragraphs, I can go to a website called Lipsum. So I'm going to go to Chrome, and it's called Lipsum.com. And this is where I can get some Lorem Ipsum, so I can do, I don't know, two paragraphs, generate it. Lorem Ipsum is just fake text. It looks like English. So I can highlight that, copy it, and then go back over here. And I've already got my P tags that I took from up there, from the high there. And I can paste it right in there. So look, now it's only got a P tag for the whole thing. So I need to do a closing P tag here. And then I need to do an open P tag in front of this one. Because I don't want to have any tags that aren't open and closed. So now I've got an open tag here, closed, and a closed tag there, and an open tag and closed tag. And if I go to split view, then I'm going to see that. So there it is. That's a lot of... A lot there but that works okay so I've got that in there I've got the text in there so now I want to go into uh, inside heading 2 so uh, or not inside heading 2 but inside the right side I have my feature 1 and feature 2 div div classes so I'm, again I'm just gonna highlight any one of these command C and go down here and then hit return and do that do both of those and I'll put the closings in a second just like to make myself make things a lot easier. So this is going to be called Feature 1. Right, I can name it anything I want. And then Feature 2. I probably just could have kept that 2 on there. Feature 2. Perfect. And then Closing Div on that one and Closing Div on this one. And those are going to have those two images right there. So perfect. So that's our next step. So, so good on this so far. And we're going to insert now Feature 1 and Feature 2. So if I go here to insert image and then I look for the feature so this is going to be box one right there and then this one's going to be box two so insert image and then this one's box two uh, and they are fitting inside there and then those are my height and widths for those so that makes that easy there's a little bit of an issue with this box two you can see that I have a dangling part on here when I did my output on my image generation in Photoshop, I made this image too big on accident. I actually didn't make it too big. I, there was a part underneath the fold of Photoshop that I forgot to chop off. So I'd have to go back to Photoshop and fix that. 
uh, and size it and the whole thing. So one way to do that is to go open up Photoshop, find the part, delete that bottom part and resave it. Or for just for now, I'm just going to make this both the same image um, so they're the same thing. But they have to be the same size. They have to both be the 165. So there we go. So now they're both the same image. Uh, but imagine that there's two separate images in there. Okay, so we've got that going on. So now the next step is to do the CSS and make these look right. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. So we're going to flip over to the CSS scroll down to the bottom and start adding all of these elements in. I'm going to switch to code view. Okay, so let's do the left and right columns. So we're going to do that with the curly brackets. So left-hand side, this one's going to be, I'm going to say, you know, again, our total width is 960. So I don't want to go any bigger than that. And I want to kind of save some room for any padding and margin that I may have on these two boxes. So I'm going to say the width on them is going to be like 430 uh, so that would be pretty good uh, now I don't need to necessarily make a height on these and the reason why is that if I leave off the height then the content that's in the box will fill the box itself so I'm not going to do any height but I am going to float both of these left so I'm going to say float and then left and semicolon and now I can make the right one based off this one so Highlight it, Command C or Control C, and then uh, Control or Command V. Again, you should have that down by now, and then right. So now I've got the left and right, and then in you know then I've got the heading one and heading two. So let's make those. So dot heading, and there's that one, and I'll put its you know I'll put its properties and values in there so that I can just kind of. Uh, change that as needed. So I definitely want the heading uh, to come down a little bit. If I go back here, you can see that the heading, it's right up next to this. So I want to make sure that the margin uh, top, so margin dash top is, oops, spell this right, margin dash top, colon, maybe 25 px. I'm going to try to keep my, my uh, sizes all about the same. And then I'll do the same thing on the heading two. So I'll go down here and heading two will be the same. So watch when I do that and I click, then feature work kind of comes down, starting to look the way it's supposed to look. And now of course I want to have the feature one and feature two. And I, and I could definitely get in here and kind of uh, give these each their you know exact sizes, height and width uh, to go around these. So if I'm in heading one, uh, maybe I want that to you know be an exact size and, and, and really kind of, uh, fit this perfectly so I can move it around if I need to. So, but let me just kind of rough this in here, get the feature. So dot feature, and then there's one. I want to do the, oops, I keep doing the wrong brackets. I want the curly brackets. So I want to go here and brackets, and then feature one. I'm going to do that same margin 25 top that's on this. Let's go Command C, Command V. And I've got that. And then I may just do feature two, same thing. And maybe I'll have the same amount of space there. So feature two. Okay, cool. Now, if I want to put a footer in here, uh, let me go down below feature two. And this is pretty good. I mean, it's looking like my Photoshop document for the most part. And um, we're going to uh, talk about the body background here in a second. Okay, so we can put the footer in. If I, There's two places I can put the footer. I can put it below the container, right down in here. About, so the container ends right there, and I could put the footer there. So if I type in footer, and then close that, and then I can put you know some stuff in here that would go on the footer, like social media buttons and things like that. I could do that, and you can see there, there's the footer down there. And I don't have any CSS for it. So I could put it down below the container, so it stays at the bottom of the page, and let me get some CSS here. So I could say footer, this does not need a period in front of it because it is agreed upon element. And then on this, I could put in, so if I have the footer, I could do a background color and do a, a height. So let's do a height of, I don't know, uh, 90 PX and background color. And I could click this, and then 
you know, I could do the RGB color setup or I could do my color picker and I could say, oh, I like this blue, but I want it to be darker than that blue, let's say. So I could pull that down there and stay within the same family of the hue and then hit return and then semicolon. And so you can see that the footer is down at the bottom below everything else. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so that looks good, but let's say I want the footer to be the same width as the container, maybe just effectively inside the container. So I'd have to switch where it is. I'd have to go to uh, back to source code, and instead of being right here below the container, I'll cut it out of there and put it right here so that it's um, now it is inside the container. But look where it shows up. Oh my. Right, it's it's skipping past these two flow or these two columns that are floating and going up to the next item. So I need to clear this item as well because these two things are floating. In fact, I need to clear a bunch of things. So what I'm going to do is to move this down. I have to see now. Look at the width. But to move it down, I have to do a clear float in the CSS. So I'll go down in here and I'll say clear. And there we go, and then I could do both. It doesn't matter, left or right, or both. And now it just moved down. If I want to push the footer down from here, I could push it off the bottom of feature two. So you can see I put this margin dash bottom in here, and I could put in, let's say, like 40 pixels, and that's going to push this down. That's better than doing margin dash top on the footer itself to push it down from here. Uh, I'd rather just push it down from the feature two, which is the box directly above it, so then I can push it down. Now, let's make the body the background color of uh, our project here. So what I want to do is scroll up to the up here, and I don't have any body code. We never kind of did that. We just started with the container. So I'm going to do body and do my curly brackets, and I want to do a background color. So background dash color colon and I can put that color in the from the from my color picker whatever my project was so if it was I think it was 9 to B 8 I wrote it down here DB so that's my color there so I can put that in and that's my background color then I would take the background color out of the container because I put that background color in just as a placeholder so if I take that out now I've got the background color of the Photoshop document. Now you'll notice that the header doesn't go all the way across either does the footer. It's kind of like in this 960 width here and to get the header to go all the way across I do one last thing in here. So this is all looking good uh, but maybe I want this header to kind of go edge to edge right like this. So what I do is go to my source code and I'd move the header above the container kind of like how I could move the footer down outside so maybe I want the header to be above it. So I'll take the whole header, here's the bottom of it, uh, with all of its swap images, and go from there to there, and I'll cut it, Command or Control X, and I'll put it above the container. So it's not nested inside the container. I'm going to give myself some space and put it above there. There we go. Now when it's above there, it's going to go edge to edge all the way across in my browser, which is really nice. Then I'll probably have to get this uh, logo and all these things to move over and to do that I'd have to wrap them in a div called the wrapper. So we don't have time for that in this tutorial but I could in other words put this and these four items inside the header I could wrap a div around them and then I could move that div over and center it with everything else and probably I'd want to move this footer too. So let me move that footer. I like it outside of the container so I'm going to command X and put it here and put it at the bottom. So now the footer's going edge to edge just like the header's going edge to edge. All right, so there you have it. That's gonna kind of be our layout for, um, for this uh, Photoshop to Dreamweaver. I've pretty much got all my elements in here and I could go and tweak them. In other words, I could take this text and I could, in this box right here, I could put padding in there so the text isn't going right up next to these two boxes, give myself a little space in between them. I could margin these over so I could move featured work and this stuff over in the CSS so that its edge moves over here. So I could do all of that stuff and you guys could should be able to do that now on your own. You could take your 
This is your left box, this is your right box or column, and I could move the whole right column over a little bit and margin it away from this one, right? So I do that back in the CSS, and I would go and do that. So you guys can do that on your own now, or we could do that in class together when I see you in class, but if you're just doing this on the computer, I think you've got enough here to kind of get started. So, all right, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.